today we're going to talk about soap operas. It's what we're going to talk about, right? No. No? No. I don't, I don't want to talk about soap operas. <laughs> we're going to talk about role-playing games as yes. kind of soap operas. In response to uh, the Black Lodge. Kind game, of response. Kind of response. <laughs> because the response would see we don't agree with them. Yeah, and of it's course, usually, usually yes, in this case. <laughs> For we have some things in common with them, while well, both of our channels' names come from. Yes, uh, and that's why uh, we agree in this subject as well, because we are thinking about soap operas, not thinking like. Um, the bold and the beautiful, the bold and the, beautiful, and the, young but, and the restless. Yeah, but, uh, or the East Enders or something like that. But uh, Twin Peaks, because Twin Peaks was. Well, it still is a soap opera. But yeah, well, I'm, I'm doing not product Peaks, placement yes. because, well, of course, they gave uh, Twin Peaks as, as an example, a good example, and this is a practical example how Twin Peaks could be turned into yes. a, a role playing game. But, but before we go just into that, placement. yeah, we, we'll have to talk about the, that as, as an example, really. But okay, before we go into that, some uh, some advertising. We've released this week uh, something new. We haven't been. Uh, releasing lots of stuff because I'm working on Darker and, uh, and now also um, a revised edition uh, of uh, Wretched Bastards with a new cover. Um, but before I go into that, uh, because that's not really the news for this week, uh, there's a new book and this is a small one. Um, it's called R Wretched World. This is a uh, something that was already introduced in Vice Second Edition, <coughs> the nineteen nineties uh, cop action uh, source book for Wretched. It had nothing to do actually with the, the rest of the setting. It was introduced as a, a location, a location in the in the city, which is Sand Cove, because Sand Cove is uh, uh, our version of Miami, and uh, Disney Wretched Dis World is our. Well, Disney our version world of is, Disney World, uh, Disney not world. as wretched as Disney World. I think there are less pedophiles in uh, the wretched world. But there's a mention to pedophiles. Yes, as well. of course. Uh, okay, so what is this? Uh, it's uh, the, that description is expanded. There, there are tables, there are characters, uh, a few plot hooks to be used. Um, it, but but simple. Since since if you have Vice, most of the content or the most important part of the content is already there. Um, you can download mm -hmm. the the this this booklet. Call it. If you don't have advice, you can get, if you don't have, it, you yeah, get both. You for, get both for the, price, for the of price of one. And this, but obviously, if you just the want the booklet, advice. yes, exactly. If you want the book, at least very very uh, cheap. It's just uh, one fifty, so it will be at the store. Maybe it will be in paper. I don't know. Probably yes. I, I guess, but I will have to. I will wait until mm -hmm. I um, do something else. Uh, I'm not going to order that. Just that. Just yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, I'm probably with darker. With darker and uh, or before mm -hmm. that with uh, with Bridget Busters because I have to order a copy anyway for the next. Uh, there are some changes. Uh, Wretched Busters will have more pages and a new cover, so so it's uh, there will be a new uh, version of the book and uh, in print as well. Okay, that's publicity is over. Now let's let's go into the today's subject. Okay, let's start by, by saying that when they say, and the, the guys at the Black Lodge, the same thing, when you say this is the, that uh, role-playing games can and should be played as soap operas, we're not talking about romance, mm -hmm. or at least we're not talking about just romance. Because that's one of the things that people would say, oh, but I want adventure, I don't yeah. want feelings. Uh, yeah, okay, you can, you can have feelings, that there are different types of feelings, and you can not have just feelings love. In an adventure. Yes, but uh, it's not just, there are other feelings. Love mm -hmm. is a feeling, but hate is also a feeling. Mm -hmm. a f fear, a fear is a feeling, is a feeling. Yeah. and anger is a feeling, so you can feel all those things. And also love if you want to, if you want to introduce that, uh, passion, all that. But, greed. Um, greed, yes. Um, but the fact that we are calling it a soap opera, doesn't mean that is a so proper like uh, the EastEnders or uh, any of those examples that we uh, gave before. Even though those things also have other content besides romance, I guess. So for again, for example, uh, we were talking about this uh, a few days ago, and I was saying, well, General Hospital is also about romance, but it's also takes place in an hospital, so there are other things happening. 
there are other uh, soap like well, Dallas was yes. also about business as well, not just romance. Uh, I was go- I also give you as an example the the new Battlestar Galactica that is not that new, but well, it's the newest. Uh, it is uh, written like a soap opera mm-hmm. yes. because it's based on the relationships between characters. Yeah. While they yes. are in a not a spaceship or several a fleet. Yeah, well, m- most, most the people are in the same space, but yeah, yeah, but sometimes they move to the other. Yeah, one. yeah sometimes they move to the other. And then they were in the planet as well. Uh, so yeah, that's that's an example. Uh, we can give another example. Uh, Babylon Five also mm-hmm. has a bit of a of a yes. soapish thing. But there. it has a lack of. It, uh, it should have more continuity no, yeah, and focus it, uh, yeah. in the in the character. It, uh, it, it's it's a mix between the the planet of the of the week mm-hmm. or yes. the monster of the week as the, yeah. the so ship is. For example, uh, Star Trek could not be compared. No. Star Trek has no, at least not the, the original. One. Um, so that's probably the difference uh, between what was uh, serials and and uh, soap operas. Mm-hmm. Uh, the continuity is a little bit um, less uh, relevant, it, and it goes in how you fa- you. Uh, I will say face and prepare your sandbox because a soap opera it's still a sandbox. It's just oh, the can way be. it can be it exactly. It can be a, soul, can a be sandbox. Soul. So if you look at it as Star box. Trek, it can be a soap exactly. <laughs> you can face it as Star Trek and just roll everything and everything random, or you can look at it as a, a soap opera. If you prefer to uh, give the example as serials, just think about uh, of a serial but mm-hmm. with a little more continuity. Uh, between uh, episodes, so um, that you gave an example, the Babylon Five. Yes. Yeah, so Babylon Five. Well, Babylon Five is not a serial, mm-hmm. but uh, the, when when they talk about serials, they're thinking about uh, things from the thirties, like Tarzan and uh, mm-hmm. Flash Gordon and all that. Um, well, anyway, let's li- talk a little bit more about this and uh, also explain that when we gave the example, we weren't thinking just about Twin Peaks, we were also thinking about other kind of, um, not the American soap operas, but uh, the telenovelas. Yes. Yes. So we, we, I don't know if the, we should talk a little yes. bit about that. And we're not sure about the, well, how the entire Latin American telenovelas yeah, are, but our experience is mostly the Brazilian ones. Yes. Uh, so um, I, I think they were the first, at least uh, the most popular. Not in the, in the in the U.S. of course, and in the U.S. nobody speaks Portuguese, so then they don't understand the, and um, obviously for there's a, a, a geographical mm-hmm. reason for Mexican nov- uh, novelas or whatever they call it. Um, telenovelas. Telenovelas, yes. So uh, there's a, a geographical closeness, and uh, Mexican probably a are culture. the most popular. Mm. But Venezuelans have so yes, popular. they're popular here. Don't More than the Mexicans, I think. Yeah, I guess so. But I think they are closer to each other. The Latin mm-hmm. American ones are a little bit different from the, the Brazilians, I guess. At least the ones I, saw, I watched, the just bits. Um, I think the Brazilians have more quality. Mm-hmm. Probably the actors are better. Some of the actors are not uh, just... Uh, the TV actors they, they I, did I don't know how it is now but in the old days yes there were TV actors and yeah. t- uh, telenovelas actors yeah them even in Brazil but some of the actors they had in some of the stars in the, in mm-hmm. the soap operas they were also at least the, the older ones they had been uh, movie stars in the 70s and the 60s like uh, Vera Fischer and, uh, and then some of them probably started in mm-hmm. telenovelas and then they they were popular in movies more recently in in uh, in every uh, country like uh, that guy that was in uh, Wagner Mora. Well, yeah, that one. I wasn't thinking about like that one, but yeah, Wagner yes. Mora. The um, no, I was thinking about the other guy, the 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 one that was uh, younger when he started. Like Santoro. Yeah, Santoro. Yes. Okay, so Brazilian telenovelas. First thing, uh, the words. Telenovela, this means televised uh, novel. novel. So the concept itself uh, lends a little bit more uh, importance to the, the narrative and the story and all that. So it, that is a thing. It is about romance mostly, yes. Um, it is about, in the case of uh, the more popular Brazilian novels, 
um, novels, not novels, novelas. Um, it is about um, different kinds of um, characters that are in different kinds of uh, environments. There usually is, at least the, the, the most popular ones, there's the, the poor guys, the rich guys and some others. And usually there's a kind, some kind of romance between them. Of course, there still is this uh, in Twin Peaks, the idea, of course, the, the world, the location. And this is an, a thing that goes with your settings, our settings, the way how uh, we build them and populate them. Yeah, that, that happens. If it you have well. several nu nu nucleus, yeah, the, nucleus of characters. Yes, there are, there are, Twin Peaks also has that. I don't know if that's a, such a common thing in the American soap operas. Probably, yes. Probably. Uh, the British, I guess, they have the same thing. So there are different nucleus, and um, each one is uh, usually a family, but it's a mm -hmm. family or a family and the lovers and the, all that. And some of them are obviously, almost all of them are, are connected in some way. In Twin Peaks, everybody was connected by uh, something. That, that mm -hmm. At least uh, there was one connection that uh, ran through the, the, the whole series, which was Laura Palmer, of course. she. She was the main uh, character, even though she was dead already when the, when the the soap starts, when the story starts. But um, as I was saying about uh, the Brazilian uh, novellas, some of them, uh, and we mentioned that the other day as well, um, they are inspired by or adaptations of books and uh, yes, most of them are w uh, probably George Amado, so that yeah. in, so they are inspired. George Amado is not really probable in the US, I yes, guess, but, but he's in the same uh, literary movement as uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Isabella Allende. Yes, so magic, so magic realism. realism and magic realism is uh, mostly Latin American, but I think there are some uh, American books that uh, use that term. So those normally uh, take place in small towns. And they mix, of course, fantasy with uh, yeah. uh, the life of the small town. And those are even a bit similar with, I would say, Twin Peaks because they have that big yes, uh, uh, yeah, presence. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a connection there, even probably, I don't think um, David Lynch was aware of that, and probably wasn't thinking about it. But yeah, there is some kind of... Uh, there's something in common between all the current of uh, magic realism and probably where, where uh, Lynch yeah. got his inspirations. Yeah, probably, yes. Well, maybe you read some ma magic realism, mm -hmm. probably not George Amado, but something else. Uh, and yes, in that well, case... Well, uh, I'm forgetting the name. George Luis Borges. Yes, Borges, of course, yeah. is also, and everybody yeah, reads Borges. It's also magic realism. It's magic, also magic, magic realism. realism. People, I tend to forget that. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it Borges. is, it's not the same thing, but yeah, it's the same, it's the same concept, at, at least. So, um, those that are based on uh, magic realist, in the, there are several, that's not just a couple, there are at least five or more. Um, those ones are a bit different from the others because they take place in the same uh, area and it's never a city, a big city, so that thing about the, the poor and the rich and all city, that, yes. it's, they are there, but it's... Well, it's, it's also the family different. that controls the town. Yeah, usually there's that thing, yes, and uh, you are probably thinking about Hot Sun Yes, uh, and they have always a Cognell, yes, 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 with yes. Bring, yes. <laughs> uh, But, um, yeah, okay, so, uh, and those are a little bit better than the others. They are also there are also historical. Uh, yes, and I would say that the, the level of, the, uh, of production is uh, very high, and we are saying yeah. good things about uh, something it's the Brazilians yeah. did. <laughs> it's not that we like it, but uh, well, I liked it when I was yeah, uh, I when I was Brazil. younger. Well, and of course, you only had uh, two TV channels here, so yeah. most of the time you would watch the yeah, at night we the would na novela da noite, the one that was uh, and usually the one that that was the best one. Yeah, that's the. the the production values on that one were, were usually the most... Uh, I, I was thinking about, for example, Pantanal. I never saw that one because I was in Gaps to Yang, but it was also a bit, uh, how can I say, controversial because he had nudity and nudity, all that. Yes, yes. So that's about, well, I think it's Tarzan or Mowgli in, in Brazil. Yeah, uh, also the something else that, uh, that happens in Brazilian novellas, and I think I, I was uh, checking that a bit ago, uh, on, uh, on, I was Googling, Googling that, there are also uh, supernatural uh, telenovelas, and not just in Brazil, also in Latin America there are some... Uh, 
And I don't just don't mean I don't mm -hmm. mean just magical realism. Yes, I mean really supernatural. Really supernatural. Well, I remember vampires, 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 Yeah, so that's one of the differences uh, between the, the American soap operas that sometimes run for a long time. Like, so I think there are some. That, uh, there was that one that run for uh, held the world turn. It yeah. was held, uh, yeah, held I think the world that turn. Was the, the one that uh, turned more. There was a, a lady there that started as uh, a, a Yang, so she was the protagonist, and then at the end she was the grandmother. So, uh, and those are the most common and. Uh, That's why uh, we have to probably explain to the two yes, American that not audience that we're not talking about those ones. It's more we're talking about more like Dallas, and Dallas is closer to the Brazilian ones because um, it was shorter, um, and that's that's another reason. That it was shorter, and it, it, it wasn't just all about relationships. Uh, there there are other things, at least not romantic relationships. Obviously, it was the main reason. But uh, okay, so uh, there was a murder case as well, so it was important in in there, and, uh, and the same thing with uh, with Twin Peaks. Obviously, Twin Peaks is this elevated mm -hmm. into a different uh, um, thing because it's well, it's a David Lynch product. It's not just some guy who does TV shows. It was uh, David Lynch, and uh, and there's the bizarre uh, as well, which uh, uh, worked fine. Or it worked. Uh, very well in, the, in Twin Peaks, but it's not necessary. The, it has nothing to do with the fact that Twin Peaks is a mm -hmm. soap opera. Twin Peaks is a soap opera and it is also bizarre. It's bizarre because it was by David Lynch, uh, but it could have been made in a different way and maybe it would be more like a, soap, a, a typical soap opera and uh, less like a, uh, a very good uh, TV uh, product as it was in the end. I would say that it basically started what was many years later considered to be uh, the golden age of TV. I don't think without Twin Peaks that would have happened. We wouldn't have had, at least not uh, the way it happened, like Sopranos and all mm -hmm. those things. I don't think it, have, it would ever happen if it wasn't for Twin Peaks. And there are things that wouldn't really have happened uh, without Twin Peaks, like the X-Files. Mm -hmm. The X-Files owes uh, a lot to Twin Peaks, not because there's any connection between uh, that and, and David Lynch, but uh, well, because uh, it changed the way TV was made and the X-Files was also a different kind of thing, more cinematic. And uh, yes, in that time, cin were, think, cinema and TV at that time, that wasn't yeah. that common. No, but not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, well, David Duchovny yes. is in both, but well, that's just... That's just a detail. It's a nomad. Yeah. Well, he's, he was uh, doing an FBI yes. agent. On both. A troon. <laughs> in one he was a troon, and the other one he was... Really I think that Lynch saw that in a vision, that it would happen. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Uh, but another thing I wanted to say when we're talking about novellas because of the for the people that oh but I want adventures well when we yes. talk about novellas we're thinking about the serials the, the literature right uh, Alexander Dumas it's exactly the Folletin well the Three Musketeers the Count of Monte Cristo they are no, uh, novellas novels well I don't know how the world goes with novels well so all the literature the adventures uh, um, literature of the nineteenth century. Mm -hmm. Or not, not all, but most was published in um, how's it called? Segments, whatever. Yes. There's a name for that, but well, it was uh, Feuilleton. Okay, so uh, even the ones that weren't Feuilletons were published uh, even uh, in episodic ways. Dickens was uh, okay, so well, published but, like that. But Dickens is not really. Uh, yes, it's not. But uh, even Dickens was published by, uh, was published like that. So that means that uh, the fact that. The, no the novellas were based on this kind of principle of uh, episodic stuff. Uh, I guess we can... Uh, it, it works well for role-playing games. Yeah, it, that works. Is the it, it does, because uh, the fact... Well, so why is this important? The fact that it was published in segments and it was uh, sometimes... Uh, I, I would say that the author would change things mm -hmm. or uh, 
focus more on certain aspects because the audience was having a better reaction to them. They were buying more or they were writing letters or something, whatever. It depends on the different kind of thing. So, for example, uh, Sherlock Holmes wasn't like that. It was a little bit different because there's no connection. But as I remember, the character was killed, but then he had to bring him back because uh, people were demanding that that, that Holmes would, would be back. Um, I guess some uh, some of similar things happened with other kind of... Uh, I probably with Duma because he was very famous. Yeah, so probably he would uh, have some kind of uh, feedback from, from the audience and he would probably use that. And that's what happens uh, when you are playing a role-playing game. Like, if you are playing it as it's supposed to be, you have to adapt the... Uh, you as a game master, you have to adapt what you are doing and uh, where things are going according to what, not the audience, of course, you're not doing a show, but the gamers and the players. Where they are taking, yes, so that is, if you write your epic romance, but yeah. the, the players don't want to play that, well, tough luck, you can't force them. You shouldn't force them, <coughs> that's going to ruin your campaign. So, that's that's another reason for, for novella. So, how do you do that? And now let's, let's give an example here. I'm going to use this as an example? Yeah, you can use that as an example, yes. So, uh, this is an example of something that was structured like a soap opera, let's call it a soap opera now, uh, like Twin Peaks, of course. Not that we have to do what I have done, because mm -hmm. there are different ways of, of doing things. You don't have to prepare the whole thing in advance. Uh, that's not as big as this one Or is. at least not as, not as yet. Yeah. You have to prepare something, because uh, you, you in, in this case, you in fact need something. You need something prepared. This, is, this can't be a... Absolutely no preparation. Um, the cat just destroyed something. You don't have to prepare game sessions. What you have to prepare is the setting. You must have a setting. If you don't want to prepare, you can buy it. And in, the, in that <laughs> case, we sell. We have your things. yes. We yeah. have you covered. Uh, not just us. So now you can buy, uh, or at least you can uh, support the Kickstarter mm -hmm. for the, um, the Shucked Oyster. Um, I haven't seen it, obviously. I, I, I think I will see it uh, later. Uh, not later today, later in, <laughs> later in life. I don't know. Maybe, I'm curious maybe in, in, how in, they use the... Uh, yeah, so I, I think in this principles. case it's a uh, smaller location. Mm -hmm. It's a, a tavern where there are characters, but probably it's a, like Cheers. Everybody goes there. Um, I'm just saying... Uh, I don't know, and I've never seen it. But, well, from, from what uh, they have said. Uh, and there are probably connected stories and all that. The, 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 thing that the idea is the characters yeah. are connected, yes. The yeah, NPCs have secrets the and they are connected. Yeah, that's, that's the recipe for this. Uh, you I must have a location. I would say you don't need reaction roles if your uh, NPC has a purpose. Just what is the purpose of the NPC? What does he want? In this case, so you, you must have a location. In this case, uh, in the case of the, the Shake Blaster, it's just one tavern, so it's not really uh, hard to do. Um, we have one that is a building. Um, mm -hmm. You have a, an hospital. Even though, yeah, an hospital. Even those those weren't weren't uh, thought about as soap operas, but they have some connections. Uh, for example, the memorial is inspired by uh, Lars von Rigged's uh, Kingdom Hospital, which is kind of uh, mm -hmm. one of those things that uh, were inspired by Twin Peaks. So, in the second degree, it's also a soap opera, and there are some connections. Mm -hmm. actually. Um, the other one was was uh, the other one. I mean, uh, Orpheus. Oh, oh. That was I had more in mind something else uh, like sitcoms, and but some of the sitcoms are also soapish, kind of soapish. Uh, but then in the end, if you are playing, you can play it as a soap opera as well because there's a the uh, connection between the yeah people. So the there are the many many connections there. Uh, they are explicit since the beginning if you play the, the, the scenario as it's written uh, that's because I uh, had uh, the, that kind of uh, that was my kind of uh, way of my way of doing that work I, I don't mind spending some time writing about the location and that's the case of Welcome to St. Cloud there's a big location in that case a city a series of characters a bunch of characters that have some kind of, well, at least a paragraph, it could be just a line. Um, 
So my way of doing this is I prepare for a week or maybe more. more. Of course, when I did this for myself, it was about a week or two. I prepared this, uh, and I don't mean a week or two working uh, from nine to five. I mean you worked at the time. Yes, yeah. I worked at the time, so it was uh, on my uh, leisure time. Um, of course, when I published the books, I had to work more than that. That's obvious. Um, but if you are trying to do something like this, I would say that it's less work than actually structuring a session that everything is going to happen. Yeah. That anyway cannot can all go to uh, yeah. the trash if the characters if the player wants to do something that will ruin your plan. And it has uh, an advantage over that because you just have to do it only mm -hmm. once. So maybe you have to spend more time doing this uh, than you would do preparing uh, a game session every week. But then you don't have to do it anymore. You just do that at the beginning and then you can do the sandbox or whatever. You, you, obviously, if you want to do a sandbox from the beginning, you will need at least, well, roll it. Just roll whatever you want to, to roll before. If you want to run to do a, a random setting and random characters, you can just roll it. Uh, obviously, it will have to uh, consume a little bit of time more than just roll it. Not make a story. You can roll it the at the time. Yeah. You can roll it uh, while you are playing the session because then you don't have connections. But you can roll it in the day before, I guess. That will be enough. Just roll it before or write it or whatever you, you want to do it. And then that structure will be probably enough to sustain several game sessions, maybe many. Uh, Maybe. Because the players will also start building into their in yeah. their interactions, we will create momentum. Yes. So obviously this works better in certain uh, cases than, than others, um, especially for the people who are playing. That, that's probably the most important thing. Not maybe not the genres itself, the, the the genres that you are playing. I guess well, modern is better for this. Mm -hmm. Uh, contemporary if you want to go into a dungeon, the, then it's yeah. like, yeah. But if you are playing, it, it works, it would work in fantasy, well, it works because we have done it as mm -hmm. well. It works in fantasy, not in dungeons, of course. We are not expecting to do, to do a soap opera in a dungeon. <laughs> uh, but uh, you can do fantasy with this, you can do soap opera in space opera, you can do uh, any other kind of uh, styles. Uh, naturally, Fantasy usually goes into more combat and uh, encounter based. In that case, forget about it. But if you are playing in a village or something like that, you can at least do it sometimes. The soap operas, uh, the soap opera style could be used while you're uh, while uh, you're resting you're, yeah. from yeah. So uh, stealing gold coins from dead yeah. uh, goblins. Um, so it, it it can work in uh, in any kind of. Uh, theme or style, even probably it works better for modern uh, modern settings. I think that's also one of the reasons why it kind of well, vampire and werewolf, yes. uh, white wolf games got, I think it's also because of that, not just because it was theater kids playing, but because modern yeah. horror. They also, uh, it's I think it's important since you mentioned the theater kids. Uh, I guess people, when we are talking about soap operas and saying that role-playing games uh, should be played as soap operas, people will th immediately think about theater kids. But theater kids aren't thinking mm -hmm. about that. The theater kids, the, the the ones that are playing right Story now, story games, uh, probably not. They are yeah, thinking about. They want to do critical role. That's what they are trying to do. Not. They are not trying to do a soap opera. They are trying to do critical role. And then the the theater kids of the two thousands. They were trying to do something else. They were trying to do story games, which can uh, can be used to play soap operas, but it's not uh, the same thing. It's a story game. You're playing. You're building the story, not playing the character. Yeah, and that's we're talking about something. That not having a story in your game. That's not what makes it a story game. It's yeah. story gamers. They play the story, not the character. They play yeah. from uh, a higher level. And that you can use it to play dungeons or or soap, or soap operas or whatever. So it's a different kind of approach to the game itself, not to the style. The theater kids we are talking about uh, are from way back from the nineties, and that's like uh, guys like me and the guys on the uh, Black Lodge. At least one of them, 
uh, who is probably more or less my age. The other seems to uh, young Steve, Steve Buscemi seems to be younger. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he just looks younger. Um, so we are talking about a different kind of thing. Storytelling. Uh, I don't like the, the name of it. The storytelling. But that's what what White Wolf called it. They were the only games doing that, but they were the most fa famous and probably they started it. Uh, so those were the, the games that uh, many people started playing. Uh, I didn't start with that, but it was what I played most in the 90s. And uh, back then we were doing something like that, and it wasn't a story game or critical rule, it was something different. Yes, it could be called the theater kids at the time, but the theater, th the theater kids of the time were actually playing a role-playing game. They weren't playing dungeons, and that's the big difference. Most people, most other people were playing dungeons, and the theater kids of the time were role-playing. That's that was the time, and okay, I said that the, the, the mm -hmm. nasty thing. They were role-playing, not role-playing. Okay, that's something that shouldn't be, that's offensive or whatever, but I don't care. Uh, I will die on, on that hill. Uh, I am from that that time, and that's something that I will st I still uh, maintain. Uh, that's uh, that's not how role playing games were born. That, that's not how Ro role playing games were born in the war game, and then they transitioned. Like uh, <laughs> I, I love using this word, they transitioned into dungeons. But uh, I can tell you that uh, at least myself, if they were all that. If all games were dungeons, I would never play it more than a couple of weeks. I would say no. I played a couple of dungeons when I started playing Dungeons and Dragons, and I said no more dungeons. No, I don't care about this. I want to be in the village, not in the dungeon. The dungeon is something that can happen occasionally, but that's not the game. And for me, it cannot be the game. It must have. There must be NPCs that are people, not uh, <laughs> goblins or whatever they are. And uh, there must have some kind of uh, story, a reason yeah. to be on the dungeon, yes. and not just well, you're there yes, to kill the, monsters. The, the, yeah, the the encounters, okay, they are fun, some occasionally they are fun, but that can't be the whole game session. If a game session is an encounter, for me that's no, that doesn't. Okay, it might happen once. It never happened once with me because I always make the encounters quicker but uh, yeah okay I, I admit the possibility that uh, you can be playing you can you can play a, an interesting game and one time you have an encounter that, that runs the whole session but that has to be something extraordinary not not, uh, not uh, the main thing uh, if the main thing isn't at least people investigating stuff which can be you can be playing a Call of Duty game that is mostly investigation. Okay, that's that's fine. That, that's not the, the thing that I like the most. Uh, at least not for a long time. But okay, that's 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 fine. And uh, you can play that as a soap opera as well. Just not encounters. Uh, if you are playing just encounters, that you are interested in this, and you are probably not watching <laughs> this video anyway. Okay, uh, do you want to add something? Uh, I don't no, know. No, I think that's that's enough. We have bored yes. people enough. Okay. Uh, so I want to see what she, the, the cats did in the kitchen. Okay, so let's 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 go to the kitchen <laughs> and pick up stuff. Uh, so if you want to find some uh, some games that are soap operas and uh, and still have some kind of content that is not about uh, romance, you can uh, not just that one. Yeah, but I'm not gonna go and. I can actually say that everything on that. Yes. Not the drinks, the other stuff, <laughs> the books, uh, ex uh, except the the rule books. The other ones are all uh, mm -hmm. they were all designed in the same in the same fashion. We don't usually call them soap operas because we are trying to sell them. If you forget <laughs> to, to try to say this this every time, no one would buy them. But um, that's a comparison that that has to be made occasionally. And that's it. That's all, folks. Bye bye. <laughs>